Jones. Baseball is presented by AT&T Ubers TV. Well, welcome into Globe Life Park, a very warm and extremely breezy evening as the Rangers look to uh, heat up just a bit tonight as they host the Los Angeles Angels in the final game of this three-game series. And welcome in, everyone, along with Tom Green, Steve Busby. Glad you could join us for the Sunday evening edition of Rangers Baseball. Rangers trying to get back on the winning side of things. And they will turn things over tonight to their most consistent pitcher in the first half. That would be Colby Lewis. Yeah, Colby Lewis has been terrific along with Giovanni Gallardo. They have been the two Rangers that you can count on for a consistent performance every time out. Colby had a very good month of June. He had six starts in the month of June, and he was consistent in every one of them. He pitched at least six innings in all six starts. He was the Colby Lewis that you've expected to watch, spotting his fastball, mixing, mixing in sliders, curveballs, and changeups, and totally keeping the other team off balance. In those six starts, he's 4-0. and His ERA is just a little bit over three. The Rangers need a good performance from him tonight to try to salvage the last game of this series against the Angels. Well, Colby will be on the hill tonight. The Rangers facing an old friend in uh, C.J. Wilson here this evening. Delino to Shields back. He will be right at the top of the Ranger order. He is getting set to go along with Rubenet Odor. We'll come back with the lineup and the first pitch for you right after this on Fox Sports Southwest. It's brought to you by your Texas Ford dealer. Visit your Texas Ford dealer now for great deals on America's best-selling brand. Ford is the best in Texas. By AT&T, Uverse TV. Uverse has more live TV channels on the go than cable. And by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. 
an extremely breezy evening here at Globe Life Park. Rangers uh, going through their traditional home Sunday fair with the kids out at each position. Before we get things underway, let's head down to the field and check in with Emily Jones. Well, Buzz, as you and Tom have talked about, the Rangers offense has been struggling of late, particularly against left-handed pitchers. Makes things interesting when Jeff Bannister fills out that lineup part. We really struggled against left-handed pitching, and, and so just trying to find a, the right mix to, to spark some guys against this, these left-handed pitchers. But uh, also really just, just trying to get some guys in there that... Uh, we, we, we tried to get it, the, our highest on-base guys at the top of the lineup and, and still keep the power guys in, in, in place. But uh, it, it seemed to work for us for a, a, a night or two and then, and then kind of go away for, for a little bit. So Jeff Bannister keeping things interesting in terms of the lineup, Delino back, Delino the Shields back in the fold tonight, and Adam Rosales in left field for the first time this season, guys. All right, Emily, thank you. Now the... Uh, Rangers trying to snap a mini two-game losing streak. Tom's going to tell you now about the uh, Angels starting lineup for tonight. It's been a hot lineup the first two nights of this series. Johnny Giapatella leads off at second base. Cole Calhoun, the hot Cole Calhoun, will play right field. Mike Trout is in center field. Albert Pujols will DH tonight. Eric Ibar bats fifth at short. Third baseman is David Freeze. The left fielder is Matt Joyce. C.J. Crone gets the start at first base, and batting ninth is the catcher, Chris Iannetta. And that's the lineup that Mike Socia came up with to oppose Colby Lewis, our progressive scouting report for the 35-year-old right-hander. Colby, 8-3, and three, and that leads the uh, Rangers, the eight wins does, and he has been the Rangers' most consistent starter, start in and start out this year. Needs to uh, tweak his game plan against the Angels. It has not worked for him the last several times out. Colby uh, has struggled against Anaheim. The first pitch is lined to left field. It's over the head of Adam Rosales and steaming into second on the first pitch double is Johnny Giovatella. Well, you talk about getting ambushed. That's what Giovatella did to Colby Lewis on that first pitch. Well, it looked like he went up there thinking Colby Lewis throws a lot of strikes. He generally throws a fastball to the first hitter, and he's going to try to throw a strike. I'm going to go up and get one, and he was ready for it. Stayed in the ballpark, hit the bottom of the wall. No, oh, Gio Vitella at second with his 13th double of the year. And with uh, nobody out, Cole Calhoun comes up. And the first pitch to him is inside for ball one. Calhoun hitting at 263. He has uh, eight home runs, 42 driven in, and again, giving the Rangers all kinds of fits in this series. He also has been giving Colby all kinds of fits, 8 for 16 in his career. Pitch chop foul, and the count goes to one and one. The crowd here cheering the uh, score of that Women's World Cup final game. USA out on top. The seven minute mark. Two nothing already. Wow. That's coming out of the gate in a hurry. I guess so. One ball, one strike. And a little line drive is going to fall in right field. Being waved around third, Giovatella. Here comes the throw into the cutoff man, and Giovatella scores. The double, now a single. The Angels take a one nothing lead before any are out here in the first inning. And we've seen, seen a lot of balls hit hard by the Angels. We've seen a lot of balls hit softly. And the one common theme that they both have, they're all falling in. Calhoun has been hot in this series. He got jammed, lifted a little blooper just over second base. Good enough to drive in Giovatella from second base. The hits keep coming. Calhoun now with seven RBI in this series, and he is five for ten. Now the Angels out on top very quickly. Here's Mike Trout, and he rams one down the left field line. It's hooking into the corner and going foul. Mike Trout really put a charge in that, a low hooking line drive that fortunately had enough right to left on it to get it in foul territory. He'll come back to home plate with a counter, no balls and a strike. Colby, before he can even get his 
feet on the ground out there. Trailing one nothing after the first two hitters. And having to deal with a very hot Mike Trout. Trout a 300 hitter. Rangers have done a very good job in this series of keeping Trout under control. As a matter of fact, Pujols the same way, but it's been everybody else that's been a problem. Trout, one for seven in this series, although he has reached base a couple of times and scored two times. Career against Colby at 364 average, and the pitch hits him. That fastball just got away from Colby, and uh, Trout down to first, uh, Calhoun to second. And Albert Pujols coming up. I couldn't tell what the spin on that pitch looked like. It might have been a breaking ball, but it first blush, it looked like a fastball. Yeah, I think it was a fastball. Whatever it was, it was going left to right. Yeah, it looked like. Trout just takes it off the left arm and uh, heads to first. Here's Pujols. One ball, no strikes. Albert in this series, two for eight with a couple of RBI, but he has given Colby Lewis all kinds of fits. Seven for 17 with a couple of home runs. And that pitch a little bit low. Two balls, no strikes. Well, the Angels in the first two games this series jumped out in the second inning of each game. Six in the second on Friday night and three in the second last night and just didn't let up last night. Now they put one on the board here in the first and uh, are threatening for more with nobody out and two on. Three balls, no strikes. I mentioned this note last night. Coming into this series, the Angels had been 0 for 27 with men in scoring position. They have a hit tonight. They're 15 for 33, hitting about 450 in this series with men in scoring position. And everything they're putting in play seems to find a hole. And Pujols with a green light on 3 and 0, chopped it foul. Yeah, when that worm turns, it really turns. It sure it? did. You know, as we mentioned, Trout and Pools, not a whole lot of damage in the series, but that can uh, all turn very quickly with a couple of runners on. You've got Calhoun at second, Trout at first. Three balls and a strike to Pools. Line drive foul down the left side. And the count is now full. Pools, the American League leader with the 24 home runs. He has the uh, top mark on the Angels with 51 RBI this year. Since joining the Angels back in 2012, Cool Holses hit 304 against the Rangers. Colby okay is the sign, a check of second. Line drive, base hit left center field. Calhoun had to hold up with the ball deep enough in the alley. He's going to come around to score. Over to third is Trout. Pujols with the RBI base hit. And the Angels lead 2-0. Albert Pujols driving in his 52nd run of the year. Well hit ball. He reached out. Hit it solidly, though. Drove it by Elvis in the left center field. Boy, Rangers in desperate need of a double play ground ball. Yep, sure Something are. to turn this around a little bit. 14 pitches, nobody out, two runs already in. Kobe's and I have been on a nice roll. He was 4 0 in the month of June. He's had six straight quality starts. He's 3 0 with a 3.57 ERA at home in seven starts. I guess on the negative side, he has struggled against the Angels. He's lost five straight to the Angels, so they've had his number. And it looks like they're dialing up that number again here tonight. Eric Ibar, the hitter. One ball, no strikes to the switch hitting shortstop. There's a strike, one and one. Ibar 
Sox had a huge series. Remember, he had a career-best five-hit game on Friday night. Overall, he's 8 for 11. He has scored five runs. He has driven in three. Now two balls and a strike. Angels coming into play, 11th in the American League and run scored, 324. That uh, compares to the Rangers, who are 8th in the league in scoring with 348. And Ibar shoots one foul right behind Alfredo Griffin, the first base coach. Alfredo had to get those quick feet moving. <laughs> Hit the ball the other way, will you? No, two and two to Ibar. Ibar, a 280 hitter after uh, the eight hits that he's had in this series. Hits this one in the air to right field. That's hit pretty well. The liner to Shields over in the alley makes the catch. Tagging at third is Trout. He will trot down the line to score. And Ibar, with a sacrifice fly, puts the Angels on top three to nothing. Yeah, it brings in a run, but at least the Rangers get the first out. High bars had a great series. Has his overall average up to 280 now. No, now Colby will go to work against David Freeze. Freeze, a 242 average. He has 10 home runs, 35 runs driven in. One ball, no strikes. Freeze in the series, four out of eight. You can see Colby has handled Freeze pretty effectively, just two for 13. Pujols, a very small lead at first. Took something off, got that over to Freeze. One ball and one strike. Colby about ready to throw his 20th pitch here in the first inning. Maybe a double play ball. Odor turns it and not in time. Bang, bang, play at first. Odor looked like he did a nice job turning it. The ball didn't stay in his glove very long. Got it back over to first base quickly. It wasn't a hard hit ball. Took two long throws, obviously. Bill Welke, the first base umpire, and they're going to issue a challenge on the uh, call at first base. Bill Welke, who's the uh, crew chief, along with the second base umpire, Tim Timmons, will get the headsets and put in a call to the replay command center. And if you believe that is uh, clear and convincing evidence that the call was wrong, then uh, you would believe it should be overturned. And uh, if that's not clear and convincing, then the call needs to stand. But the call on the field is safe on the return throw to first. Several angles at, at that particular play. And don't forget, now, the ball has to impact the back of the glove, not just to enter the, the rim of the glove. It has to impact the back before the foot hits the bat. And that's what the uh, umpire in charge of replays for this game back in New York has taken a look at, all the different angles. Here are the two angles linked up so that they are time-coded. Foot on the bag, ball in the glove. That's why they call it bang bang. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, from those from that shot, I would I would say it's not conclusive evidence that the call was wrong. But so these guys get paid the big bucks for to make decisions like that. Yeah, there you go. Bill Welke looking up at the scoreboard, seeing if there's a an angle that he hadn't uh, been able to see yet. 
And now they've made a decision in New York and out at first base. Well, the Rangers win that challenge, which turns into a 5-4-3 double play as the call is overturned. The Angels out on the first. They score three times on three hits, and nobody left. After a half inning, it's the Angels three. The Rangers coming up. tell you now about the uh, Southwest Airlines Texas Rangers lineup that'll be charged with coming back. Yeah, a little bit different lineup tonight for the Rangers. The Lionel DeShields back in the lineup in center field leading off. Rubnet Odor will bat second tonight. Prince Fielder's at DH. Adrian Beltre is the third baseman. Mitch Moreland is batting fifth at first. Elvis Andrus is at shortstop. Ryan Rua will play right field and bat seventh. Adam Rosales gets the start in left field, bats eighth. And Robinson Chirinos will bat ninth and catch. And that lineup will face the 34-year-old left-hander C.J. Wilson. C.J. Uh, six and six this year. This is 17th start. It's always interesting to see what uh, C.J. takes out there with him. He's got a, a toolbox that, uh, according to him, has about seven or eight different pitches in it that he will throw at uh, different speeds and different times. And if you ask for an explanation, you might be confused when you come away. 0 oh and 1. Now uh, one ball and one strike to Delano Shields back in the Ranger lineup. Good to see Delano back there, and nice to see that he's 100% healthy. Been on the disabled list since the 15th of June. Roller out to high bar, one gone. And Delano rounds out, and now Rugnet Odor. Take a look at the Angel defense here tonight uh, behind C.J. Wilson. Outfield uh, has Matt Joyce in left, Mike Trout in center, and Cole Calhoun is in right. C.J. Krohn started first. Gio Vitella and Ivar up the middle, David Freeze at third, and Chris Iannetta behind the plate. Handling uh, C.J. Wilson here this evening, and he fires strike one to Odor. Rugnet, who had uh, been in the leadoff spot for the last five or six days. Now down to the number two, hitting 235 for the year. Nothing and two. For Odor to get that average up to 235. Remember when he came back from uh, AAA the middle of last month, he was hitting at 144. So he has raised that batting average nearly 100 points. And he grounds out the second base here. There are two gone for Prince Fielder. Prince Fielder steps in, still second in the American League with a batting average of 346. The uh, league leader, Miguel Cabrera, on the shelf for uh, six weeks, so his name will, I guess, uh, go off the list here in a couple of weeks.
and every the lack of at bats catches up with the number of games that the Tigers have played. 1 0 pitch, and that is a little bit low and outside. Two balls and no strikes. An 11 game hitting streak for Prince Fielder against these Angels. He hammers it to right. There it goes. Goodbye. Looks like Prince has CJ's number. Shades of the 2011 All Star game in Arizona. Well, he turned that All Star game around. CJ served one up to him in that ball game. He serves one up right there. Three to one, Angels. Home run number 14 for Prince Fielder. And number 301 in his career. Adrian Beltre takes the pitch inside for ball one. Like a spinning slider right down the middle of the plate. Since 2011, left hand hitters have only hit 215 against Wilson. He probably hasn't served that one up to him too many times. Served it up to the long guy, though. A little hanging slider on the inside part of the plate. Now, two and one to Beltre. Well, Prince Fielder. Still second on the team in home runs, but uh, now just one behind Mitch Moreland. Prince with his first home run since a week ago Friday in Toronto. In tight, three and one. Beltre at 248, six home runs, 21 RBI, trying to get aboard in front of the aforementioned Mitch Moreland. Outside, lost it. Well, the home run followed by a walk, and Moreland comes up now as a tying run here in the first inning. Well, CJ usually among the league leaders in walks. He walked 80, he's walked 85 in a season before. He hasn't walked batters at quite the same rate this year as he has in the past. His walk rate is actually down a little bit this year. Now Mitch steps in two for five in his career against C.J. Wilson. Mitch a 293 average. One ball, no strikes. Mitch a little bit of an offensive downturn of late. He's just two for his last 16. Ranger player of the month for June. 1-0 pitch coming from the left-hander Wilson. The shadows creeping out uh, toward the outfield across the infield, a stripe of, of sunshine going just about over the top of the mound now. And that is a strike on the outer edge. One and two. Sun really getting to be a problem for everybody on the left side of the diamond. Yes, freeze the third base and third baseman's trying to shade his eyes and he can't get away from it. No doubt. The six o'clock starting time is a tough one for the left side. Left fielder. Seven o'clock start time. It's usually just the low line drives, but at six o'clock start time, it's things that can be a lot higher than that. So more opportunity for the ball to go into the sun. It's able to stay alive, just poking that pitch foul. Two balls and two strikes. You get a good look from uh, our left field, uh, left field shot from our roving RF camera out there. That's that's what the left field receives, except without the filter that we have on our camera. Off the end of the bat, nub foul, still two balls, two strikes. C.J. Wilson now 20 pitches under his belt. A 
Mitch back in the batter's box. He is ready to work. Wilson studying the signs. Another 2 2 on the way. Got him swinging. Well, the inning comes to a close. Rangers will get a run on Prince Fielder's home run. They strand a runner after one. Angels three, Rangers one. Use hashtag Southwest Data, strong fan, and you just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast. This is all brought to you by the good folks at T-Mobile. Angels come to bat here in the top of the second inning, bottom third of the order, to face Colby Lewis, Matt Joyce, a 190 hitter, leading things off. And two hopper by Mitch Borland. Took a bad hop, went over his right shoulder. Mitch couldn't even get leather on it. And Joyce is aboard with a base hit. Yeah, Mitch is very dependable at first base. He's a good fielder. And this ball was hit hard and takes that huge hop. Pretty hard to plan for this kind of a hop as hard as that ball was hit. You catch that one, you just happen to get your glove in the way of the ball. Yeah. <laughs> that one, that looks hard in slow motion, let alone real motion. Now the Angels now with four base hits. It's the second straight inning. They've had their leadoff man aboard. And the breaking ball on the first pitch to C.J. Crone is in for strike one. Crone hitting at 216 and virtually all of his damage at the big league levels come against the Rangers. One for four in his career against uh, Colby Lewis. In for a strike. Nothing in two. Grown four out of nine for this series with seven RBI. Had a uh, career best six RBI game. Last night. In that 13 nothing Angel win. Laid off the breaking ball. One and two the count. Let's take a look at the uh, Ranger defense brought to you by Fred Loya Insurance. <laughs> Seen most of the guys out there with Adam Rosales in left. The liner to Shields in center. Ryan Rua in right. Mitch Moreland at first. Rubnet Odor, Elvis Andrews up the middle. Adrian Beltre at third. Robinson Chirinos catching for Colby Lewis. Little looper into left field. Rosales coming on. That's going to fall for a base hit. Just won't stop. Nope. Ball's bouncing over gloves. Bloopers falling in. And, you, know, you see little stretches like this where team will get hot, but Man, over a three-game period, it just just keeps on going. Yeah, it seems like 
it, it's fairly common to see something like that happen for the length of a game. One game, guys get hot and everything falls in, and by the next day, it's gone. But you're right, Tom. Man, this has been all three games. It's kind of ridiculous. Not much you can do about that. No, you just got to keep throwing it, and eventually they'll start going at somebody. Two on, nobody out. Ionetta, the number nine hitter up there. And he takes low for ball one. Here's Ionetta, 192 the average. Three home runs, five driven, or 15 driven in. One for five in his career against Kobe Lewis. Joyce, the lead from second. Crone away from first. 2-0 oh the count. Now the Angels will keep track of this for you. They're 2-2 two for two and runners in scoring position in this game. And that, uh, coming into this series, as Tom told you, 0 for 27. And that's inside. Three balls and no strikes. Ionetta hitting in the number nine spot. Top of the order, Johnny Giovatella is next. Brown the lead from first. And Joyce away from second. Three and one now. Colby, and uncharacteristically, out of the strike zone tonight. His, his command's not there. This is a guy who's among the top ten in fewest walks per nine innings. And ball four. There's the first walk to go along with a hit batter tonight. And that loads the bases with nobody out. And Gio Botella coming up. And let's uh, check in with Jim Knox. All right, appreciate it, Buzz. Operations once in a lifetime teamed up with Derek Holland last night to make some dreams come true from some soldiers from Fort Hood, soldiers and their families. Hey, they got to take in batting practice, got to meet Derek Holland, and got to partake in a nice fireworks show here at Globe Life Park. Everybody having a good time last night. And once again, we want to thank all the soldiers for all the things that they've done. Buzz? All right, Noxie, thank you. Well, the base is full once again, full as they were in the first inning. Giovatella, who led the ball game off by hammering the first pitch he saw from Colby Lewis off the out-of-town scoreboard for a double. Going with a breaking ball, and the appeal down to first. Tim Welke said, no, that is not a swing. One ball, no strikes. Giovatella this year five for seven with the bases loaded. Colby back. And the pitch skied to medium right field. Rua getting himself set. Tagging at third. Matt Joyce. Here comes the throw. Here comes Joyce. And he slides in safely with the fourth run of the night. Well, the second sacrifice fly that the uh, Angels have had this evening already. Plates the fourth run, and the Angels back to a three-run advantage. It is four to one, Angels. Giovatella drives in his 30th run of the year. And runners at first and second now for Cole Calhoun. Calhoun had a soft. RBI single to right field his first time up. It's this one to left center field. Ball run over for Delano to Shields. He's able to go into the alley to make the catch. Throwing back to second, back to first. Ionetta. And Delano getting a chance to uh, let some of that speed loose in the outfield. Oh, there's a well hit ball that was caught. Kind of evens it up for Calhoun today. From that angle, the sun probably not a huge issue looking in toward home plate. If you're looking toward first base, though, it's an issue. From right about there. Huh? Right about there, <laughs> yeah. Looking down the first base line between home plate and first base. Uh, two outs. Runners still at first and second for Mike Trout. Trout hit by a pitch in the first inning. A 
300 hitter for the season. 21 home runs for Trout. That's uh, tied for third in the American League. He and Nelly Cruz with 21. Two balls, no strikes. Colby a check of second. Two and one. Take a look at our Ford leaderboard. Runs scored. And we talked about this briefly last night. Mike Trout since 2012 when he became our everyday player. 413 runs scored. Next closest, Miguel Cabrera with 356. You know, I mentioned yesterday he's led the league in runs scored three straight years. If he leads the league again this year, he'd be the first player to ever lead the league in runs four straight years. Now you start talking about ever in the, in the course of baseball history, and that's a pretty impressive. Yeah, he's done it. <laughs> he will have done it four straight years. His first four years. It's not like it's the middle of his career or in the prime of his career. He probably still hasn't even entered the prime of his career yet. Two balls, two strikes. Colby set. Base hit to center field. Being waved around third is Crone. Here comes the throw from Delano to Shields. It's not in time. Sliding in safely, C.J. Crone and Mike Trout in RBI base hit. It is five to one, Angels. And Mike Trout with his 45th RBI. The first five guys in the lineup all have one RBI in this game, so they're kind of spreading it out throughout the lineup. Now, well, still first and second, still two outs. Albert Pujols takes the big breaking ball, the off speed breaking ball in for strike one. Pujols had a line drive single, driving in a run in the first inning. Now, 52 RBI for the Angel Slugger. And he skies this one to left center field. The ladder to Shields camps underneath it, makes the catch. That'll do it. The Angels add on to. They have two runs on three hits, and they leave two. After one and a half, the Angels five, and the Rangers one. Fox Sports Southwest is brought to you by your Texas Ford dealers. Visit your Texas Ford dealer now for great deals on America's best-selling brand. Ford is the best in Texas. 
Now 5-1 Angels. They have out hit the Rangers 6-1. Texas coming to bat here in the bottom of the second. Elvis Andrews to lead things off. Puffy white clouds uh, drifting by overhead. Wind coming out of the south. Good uh, you know, 15, 18, maybe 20 miles an hour. Gusting in over the scoreboard, over the home run porch in right field. Elvis, a 237 average. CJ Wilson gets a strike on the inner part. It is nothing in two. Elvis, one of the Rangers that's uh, been having a bit of a struggle of late, 0 for his last 15. Shoots one the other way. <laughs> CJ Crone, you know, he had an awful lot of that uh, ball showing out of his glove, but it was able to carry it over to first for the out. Definitely going to get his body in front of it if he had to smother it some way. Ball tried to pop out of there, but he wouldn't let it. No one gone. Here's Ryan Rua. Rua. A 192 average. All three of his RBI, the result of three solo home runs. One ball and one strike. Wilson back to the plate. One and two on the chopper foul. Understand the wind uh, is said to be 14 miles an hour here. I don't think the guy who took that measurement's out here at the ballpark. Maybe at the uh, weather service office in downtown Arlington. One two pitch. Tried the back door and somebody put a lock on it. Two balls, two strikes. Lags pretty well stretched out and breeze. Coming straight in from right field. It's out of play to the first base side. Rua making his 10th start since coming off the uh, disabled list. Had that uh, heel fracture and had to have surgery to repair it. He got activated uh, from the 60 day deal on the 19th of June. In tight, three and two. Arua trying to get aboard here in the second with one out. Adam Rosales in the on deck circle. Wilson to the wind, the payoff pitch. Call strike three. Tailing fastball. Rua, a couple of steps toward first, and uh, he had to stop and pick his bat up and make a right turn back to the dugout. Look like CJ is trying to hit the inside part of the plate. You can see where Ionetta sets up. He hit the glove. Yeah, the glove might have been set up a little bit out of the strike zone. Looking at our Fox tracks, you can see Ionetta catch the ball and then move it a little bit toward the inside corner. It's usually a telltale sign that it might not be quite on the corner. No, two away bases empty. Adam Rosales taking strike one. Adam at 231. He's had a significant number of at bats against C.J. Wilson. He's three for 24. One and one the count. Adam over his last uh, month and a half or so of play. He didn't get 311. And down on the count here, a ball and two strikes. CJ Wilson with an even record at six and six. And a nice start his last time out against the White Sox and Trying to back it up with another good outing here against the Rangers. And as we mentioned, this ballpark has not been kind to him over the years. As an angel, as a Ranger, he was very good in this ballpark. 27 and 15 as a starter. Coming in here as a visiting pitcher, though, he has had no success whatsoever. An ERA of better than nine. Yeah, contrast that to the Angels as a team. They've won 13 of the last 15 games here. They've had the Rangers number. Mike Socius Club. 
dealing with all the uh, front office controversy and apparently dealing with it pretty well as far as not letting it affect them on the field. And Adam Rosales caught looking at that third strike. Back to back called third strikes. Rangers gone in order in the second. After two, Angels five, Rangers one. This is Tanner Hawkins-Smith of the ALS Association. It is ALS night here at Globe Life Park, Absolutely. and a lot of people know this as Lou Gehrig's disease. Mm -hmm. And it was yesterday that marked the 76th anniversary of the Lou Gehrig speech. Yeah, absolutely. You know, he said he was one of the luckiest men in the world, that uh, he, he got a bad break, but he had a lot to live for. And, um, you know, we see a lot of ALS patients have that same mentality today. Um, but, you know, we've made a lot of progress in 76 years in this fight against ALS, and we're hoping to make a lot more here in the future. All right, now, Tracy, you got to throw out the first pitch. What was that like? It was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. I appreciate the honor. Right, you did a nice job right there over the plate. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, uh, now, one thing, Tanner, the ALS Bucket Challenge is coming back. Absolutely. You know, uh, we made a lot of per a lot of progress last year, raised a lot of money, but it's going to take a lot more to find a cure uh, for people like Tracy and the uh, future for ALS. And so we're saying every August until a cure, get ready or August, dump some more ice on your head, raise some more money for the fight against ALS. Right, well, we look forward to August. And appreciate it, Tanner. Thank you, Tracy. Way to go, buddy. Appreciate it. Thank you, Buzz. All right, Noxie, thank you. Now, as you saw, Eric Ibar, another hit under his belt. He leads off with a double right down the first baseline. At second now, and first ball swinging. That is David Freeze off of Beltre's glove into left field. Around third, coming in to score is Ibar. David Freeze with the RBI base hit. It is six to one in favor of the Angels. I'll say one thing about the Angels they are up there swinging the bats. They're not waiting around to get deep into account to eyeball pitches. They're going up there. First good pitch they see, they are. Smoking it. Another ball on the chalk. Most of that ball was on the foul side of the chalk. Well hit ball, just barely off Adrian's glove. The hit parade keeps on going. First six guys all have an RBI for the Angels. Everybody in the lineup has a hit except Ionetta, who's walked in his only plate appearance. Matt Joyce had a leadoff single in the second and scored a run. The six runs on eight hits now for the Angels. Line drive to center. That is right at Delano to Shields. One gone. And the Angels have six runs. Six Three. different guys have, have knocked in a run. Six different guys have scored a run. They have eight hits, and eight different guys have one hit. That's about as well as you can spread it around. <laughs> yeah. 
Maybe we should have, we should have focused instead of on Trout and Pujols the entire crew on Friday night. I get yeah, the feeling we, we made somebody mad. We really uh, were pretty accurate in our estimation of how to pitch <laughs> to the Angel lineup. Yeah. Worry about two guys, don't worry about the rest of yeah. them. Yeah. That had seemed to be the case coming into this series, and it definitely hasn't been the case in this series. Everybody's been doing it. You look at that up and down the lineup: Calhoun, Crone, Ibar, Trout, Giabotella, all over 300 against the Rangers this season. And there's a looping drive down the left field line. That's going to fall in for a base hit. Stopping at second after a turn is freeze. First and second with one out. And Ionetta coming up. Crone has his second hit of the night. Now before Ionetta steps in, let's send it over to Aaron Hardigan for a Mazda game break. All right, Aaron, thank you. It was kind of a back and forth affair in Fenway. Here's a here's an interesting note on CJ Crone. CJ Crone has more hits this year against the Rangers than he does against every other team yeah. combined. Yeah, add two more to that. He's total. got he's he's got 16 hits against the Rangers and 13 hits against everybody else. Sitting over 500 against the Rangers and 135 against the rest of the league. That that's ridiculous. Be back in Triple A if he didn't face us. <laughs> he might have been released. If he hadn't faced the Rangers. Goodness. Well, Chris Ionetta drew that walk his first time up. Runners at uh, first and second. A run across here in the third, and Colby misses. One ball and one strike now. Crowd as they were last night. Kind of. Uh, Laid back waiting for the Rangers to give them something to cheer about. It's been tough. Angels have jumped out in front of all three games, throw down a second. Freeze back in ahead of the throw. Angels have jumped out to a 6 1 lead here in the third inning. It was uh, 4 0 last night in the third inning and 6 0 the night before in the third inning. Two and one the count. That'll even things up. Ionetta hitting at 192. Colby Lewis trying to get the second out of the inning, or possibly a double play ball to get him out of the inning. Got the strikeout. There is out number two. Colby, that is the first strikeout of the evening. Now Johnny Giavotella will come up for the third time. Giavotella, a double and a sacrifice fly. One for one officially. He has scored a run. He has driven in a run. One ball, no strikes. Gio Vitella, four out of 11 in this series. The right field, that is down for a base hit. Freeze coming around third, he will score. Rua drops the ball and gets it back in quickly after recovering, but the RBI base hit, it is seven to one Angels. Freeze scores, going around to third base, and Ionetta. Uh, excuse me, Gia Botella on it first. Well, seven runs on ten hits. All the Angels in this ball game. It's an Angel team that scored 21 runs the first two games. It's added eight more or seven more in the third here's, inning. Here's another way to put something in perspective. It feels like the Angels have been hitting since the first batter of the first game of the series. 
They won the first two games. They've already scored seven runs in this game. So over the first two games and three innings of this game, they still haven't scored as many runs as the Rangers scored in the one game against Baltimore <laughs> when the Rangers scored 30. That's true. How, That's yeah, true. Talked about this the other night. How bad could that game have yeah. been for the Orioles? The Rangers packed more than this whole series into one game against the Orioles. Yeah, but at least that's over in three and a half or four hours. I mean, this is dragging on. Yeah, well, on that's on. true. This <laughs> is like the Chinese water torture. <laughs> but that was just that that game yeah. was just the first game of a doubleheader. That, yeah, that's amazing. But it came back and won again. I don't remember the score of the second game, but it wasn't low score. I think, it was a, I think they scored nine runs. Did they? Mitch Bowen right at the bag takes it, steps on first. That will do it. But two more runs come across. Angels get two runs on four hits, leave two after two and a half, seven to one, Los Angeles. Works out here at Globe Life Park. Fans attending the interleague matchup when the Padres are in town on Friday, July 10th, will be treated to a post-game fireworks show set to 80s music. Get discounted up or reserve tickets for July 10th by using the online coupon code fireworks at TexasRangers.com slash specials. Well, the Rangers coming to bat here in the uh, bottom of the third inning. Seven to one. Angels are on top. Rangers uh, with just the one hit. That was Prince Fielder's home run in the first. Robinson Chirinos takes outside from C.J. Wilson for ball one. Chirinos hitting a 202, eight home runs, 27 driven in. And ball two is down and away. Robinson uh, did not play yesterday with uh, Juan Rodriguez getting the start. It was Corpy Day. Corporan uh, catches Wandy Rodriguez every time that he throws. But Torino's back in there tonight. Struggling lately in the last seven ball games, just three for 23. And he has still had an, an extremely good year, good first half of this year behind the plate. Last 15 games, he's hit nearly 230. And take strike two to even the count. Trainers and Ionetta having a little conversation. Now the 2 2. Popped him up. I borrow the shortstop. One gone. Back to the top of the Ranger order for the line on the sheet.
the Shields and a ground ball to short leading off the ball game for the Rangers tonight. And Delano, as we mentioned, just back in the uh, in the lineup off the disabled list. Good to see him back out there. We talked about the Rangers and their struggles against left-handed starters. And, you know, it goes back. It pretty well corresponds from the time that Delano went out of the lineup. That was the uh, middle of June. Rangers, the first part of the year, had fared very well against left-handed pitching. They hit 265 as a team against them. That was fourth best in the American League. But since the beginning of June, or more accurately, about the first week into June, and that had started to tail off and to the point where they're hitting just 187 since the uh, first week of June. And that is the lowest in Major League Baseball against left-handers. And I'm not going to pin it all on Delano Shields' absence, but uh, that was a contributing factor. Couldn't check his swing there, and Delano now with a count of two balls and two strikes. Tom, I, Tom, I know you and I talked about Delano when he was healthy and playing all the time. What a, a big plus he is at the top of that order. He sure has been, and you know, there's a kid that went to spring training just hoping to somehow make the team as a Rule 5 draft choice. Now you're halfway through the season, and Kind of counting the days while he was on the disabled list until we could get him back in the lineup. Yep. He had been a definite force at the top of the lineup. Payoff pitch to him. That is low and outside. And you know, that that at bat was pretty representative of the at bats he had before he went on the disabled list. He's one of the more patient Ranger hitters. Takes close pitches as a nice, calm approach at the plate. And it's such an attribute for someone with his speed to be able to take a walk and get on base. Increases on base percentage. Uh, one figure, I guess, you know, when you're talking about a lead off spot or wherever Delano will happen to be hitting, scoring runs is probably the paramount thing for a guy like him. When he went out with the injury, he was leading the team in runs scored. He had 32 of them in just 48 games. Yeah, and he hardly played the first 20 right. games of the season. So not only did he get on base, he was brought around. He made things happen up there. Rugnetto Odor, it's a two hopper out to second. They go to second to get the force. Just barely able to keep a toenail on the bag, Eric Ibar. But they get Delano to Shields. And there are two gone now with Prince Fielder coming up. Not really not going to be able to do the math in my head as the thought comes to my mind but per plate appearance he probably leads the team in walks too he walked 20 times and has probably half the plate appearances as someone who's played every day right a one on two out Prince Fielder unleashed his 13th home run of the year First time up against C.J. Wilson. He takes a strike here. And Prince now with the average at 348, 13 home runs, 50 RBI. And for those of you into uh, projections, that's pretty close to 100 RBI season for Prince. That's off the glove of Ionetta all the way to the backstop. And down to second goes Odor on the pass ball. Chris Iannetta, usually a very sure-handed catcher. This thing, I don't think it crossed him up. He just didn't get a good look at it, it looked like. So Odor at scoring position now for uh, Prince Fielder. One ball, one strike to count to him. Prince tired of waiting and asked for time. It is granted. Point umpire Tom Woodring calling the balls and strikes tonight. With runners in scoring position, Fielder with that 426 average. Two and one. This might very well be a an attack where you see CJ Wilson not have not really care to throw a strike. I'll give you some of those, and it doesn't matter what the score is. I like to see him throw that same slider he threw him the first time up. <laughs> Got a pop up on the left side of the diamond into foul territory. Freeze 
And reaching in as the ball is pushed that way. Did he make the catch? I don't think so. No. He didn't get close enough to the wall, or otherwise I think he might have had a chance. He got over there. I think he thought that ball was going to be closer to him than it ended up being. And so he's actually about two or three feet away from the brick wall. If he got over to the wall and then reached up, it would have been a pretty easy play for him. See how far he is away from the wall. He's leaning toward the wall. Wasn't able to come up with it. Mm -hmm. Again, there's no padding on that wall. No, you don't want you don't want to run into that wall. <laughs> Brick gets awfully hard. Two two. This Prince just trying to make some contact. Again, he's very perfectly happy in this situation with a blooper to center field. He's just trying to make some contact. You make a great pitch, he'll figure out a way to hit it softly into play. You make a mistake and. He'll drive it the other night with two strikes and that approach he hit it off the wall 400 feet in right center field. Yeah with well, a swing that was about two feet long yeah, like he was playing pepper. <laughs> well, C.J. Wilson studying the signs and Ionetta ran out of fingers so he had to call for time. Two balls two strikes two outs Odor out at second. A cue shot down the first baseline. Wilson has it, throws, and gets Prince Fielder. Well, the Rangers get a base runner, a walk, and leave one stranded. We're going to the fourth inning. It's the Angels seven, the Rangers one on Fox Sports Southwest. On, uh, Camp Wisdom Road in Duncanville. Don't miss the chance for great prizes and meet one of your favorite Rangers at Whataburger. Well, the Angels come to bat here in the top of the fourth inning. Mike Trout leading things off against Colby Lewis. 7 to 1 Los Angeles. And joining us now in the booth, as always on our home telecast, Mark McLemore. Mac, uh, well, I, I said nice to see you the last two nights. I don't you know, I'm going to go by that because it's, this is kind of like deja vu. All over again. Yeah. Trout way up in the air to center field. That might have the hang time of the year right there. Wow. I'd have to ask Kelly Donaldson to get us the hang time on that one. That uh, and I know Trout's pretty fast, but anytime you can see the guy at the second base before the ball comes down, that's that's, that's pretty good. Hang time. That's a pretty high one. There. That shows a high one with and a guy with some speed. Yeah. And I don't think he was running full out. Might no. be able to get the third. <laughs> no one gone. Here's Albert Pujols. Let me ask you this, Matt. Do you have any suggestions that we might do differently? 
to me besides the, the obvious. Besides the obvious. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think the obvious speaks for itself. Yeah, really. it probably does. It pretty well covers I, 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 it, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it, it really does. I mean, you've got to pitch better, obviously, and you've got to swing the bats, and that's what's really going on right now, and it just seems to be both of those elements aren't there, you know, on a nightly basis over the last couple of weeks. So, yeah, those are the things that needs, need, they need to change. You know, I, I know getting getting behind early makes a big difference in the in psychology of hitting and, and certainly pitching too, but hitters, t you tend to look more lethargic, if, if you will, when you're down early, and that's kind of what it looks like with the Rangers. Not that they're not trying. I know they are. Right. But just it, it, like the game is being played underwater sometimes mm -hmm. when you get behind like that early. Yeah, you're down seven to nothing, and then you peck away and you get a couple of runs here and a run there, and in a normal game, you're feeling pretty good about it. <laughs> right. In this game, you're still down by four <laughs> runs. It feels like it doesn't make any difference. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, it's just difficult. I mean, you know, you try and tell yourself, hey, we've got plenty of game left. We can get to this guy. We've gotten to him before. You know, we can do it. We can do it. But it's, it's tough, especially when it's, you know, over a stretch that the Rangers have been going through over the last couple of weeks when it seems like it's this way every single day. That's the old good news, bad news. Good news is we've got plenty of game left. Bad news is we've got plenty of game left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's one thing to say, okay, that's the lead. We can come back. But the other part of it is you still have to keep them from scoring right. anymore. Right. Yeah. And, you know, they're just on a roll right now. It just doesn't seem to matter. Yeah, they have shown no inclination of backing off. That ball is driven deep to left field. The ballpark will not hold that one. Albert Pujols, his 25th home run of the year. On a 3-2 pitch, it is 8-1. Goodness. Yeah, it just seems as though every time they swing the bat, they're finding the fat part of the bat. Folks, uh, getting a little restless, and you can understand why. Well, Albert Pujols, his first home run in this series, is 25th for the year. Angels lead at 8 to 1, and Eric Ibar. Here's our Phantom Cam. Watch how little vibration this thing has. The ball didn't even wiggle. I mean, the bat didn't even wiggle. High bar, slicing a fly ball out to Adam Rosales, who makes the catch. That's out number two. Third baseman, David Freeze. Now, Colby will deal to David Freeze. Freeze had an RBI single and scored a run in the third inning. First inning, rounded into a double play. Colby with his 70th pitch of the night. And Freeze takes it for strike one. Well, you see the, the look on Colby's face. I, if you could get an infrared meter up there you would see a lot of steam coming off that Oof. collar he is that is one hot man and you know, as much at himself as anything and, you know, he's just completely disgusted with how things have, have gone have taken place here yeah there's no question he's definitely not happy with it not you know there's some pitches that he's not executing and it seems as though every time he throws one that's not where he wants it they hit it and they do some damage yeah. with it That pitch low and in. One ball, two strikes. You know, I think people think that sometimes uh, or that every mistake gets hit. That's not true. <laughs> no. That, you know, hitters miss pitches. They take them. They'll foul them off. But today, it just seems as though uh, every mistake Colby makes, you know, they're hitting them and they're firing a hole. You, get, you know, you get a ball off of Beltre's glove, which we don't see happen very often. Get a hop that almost went through uh, Moreland's chest. Mm -hmm. A dunker here, a dunker there, and next thing you know, it's four runs. Yep. One two pitch on the way. Now two and two. Yeah, you know, Tom and I were talking, Matt. It, it seems like the entire series has been that way. Uh, you know, the Angels have 
And, and not taking anything away from how, how well the Angels have played. They've swung the bats well. They pitch well. But they've also gotten every break. And, I, and when you're playing well, you get the breaks like that. Yeah, it just happens. It happens for, you know, for every team. Every team goes through it. I mean, you look at the Angels. They're a couple of games ahead of us. So, obviously, they're not tearing up the lead. So, it happens to every team at some point throughout the course of the season. And this is just a bad stretch for us right now. Freeds is good to, gives this one a ride to center. But the ladder to Shield is able to track it down on the warning track. That'll do it. But Albert Pujols has one more for the Angels. His 25th home run of the year will go to the bottom of the fourth, 8-1 to one, L.A. And back to the first 15,000 fans, 14 and older, will take home a Hawaiian Rangers t-shirt. That's courtesy of Fox Sports Southwest. Visit TexasRangers.com to get your tickets for Tuesday, July 7th. Good looking shirt. We just had one up here. Mac was modeling it. And it looked, uh, <laughs> looked good on you, Mac. Yeah, like thank that. you. Appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> I ordered about three of them. Did you? I did. I did. Get them out for Christmas gifts. <laughs> I will, be, I will be re-gifting those. Is what <laughs> Adrian Beltre will start things off. The middle third of the Ranger order to face C.J. Wilson here in the fourth inning. And Adrian takes the changeup in for strike one. Beltre drew a walk back in the first inning. That's one of two uh, passes that C.J. Wilson has issued tonight. One ball and one strike. C.J. approaching the 60 pitch mark. Facing his first hitter here in the fourth inning. Sharply hit ground ball backhanded by Ibar. That's pretty smooth. One out. First baseman, Now we'll take a look at our Kubota power stat. We were talking about Tuesday. How about Giovanni Gallardo headed back out to the hill last eight starts. 4-0 with an ERA just barely above zero. A 169 opponent's average. 29 and a third scoreless innings and counting. That's the longest active streak in the major leagues. He will face the Diamondbacks on Tuesday at 7 o'clock right here in this ballpark. On this station. Tuesday night. And Mitch will be there too. Mitch a strikeout back in the first inning. Two balls, no strikes. More than a 291 average as he uh, steps back into the batter's box. C.J. Wilson throws uh, ball three down and away. Now the 3 0 pitch. Ah! 
Mitch, just one for eight on the homestand thus far. Mentioned uh, a bit of a downturn the last four ball games. Sharply hit ground ball, but right at Gio Botella. Two gone. Next will be Elvis Andrews. Elvis grounded out to the right side his first time. I believe that off the second inning. He had a sharp ground ball, but it was right at C.J. Crow in the first baseman. Rangers have just one hit. That was the home run in the first inning by Prince Fielder. They've had a couple of walks, but other than that, have not been able to generate any offense tonight. It's a little bit low. Two balls, no strikes. Matter of fact, the Rangers have had a hard time generating offense of late period. The last 20 ball games, the Ranger ball club has averaged just a shade over three runs per game. And this is a club that in the month of May, we're right at the top in uh, the American League as far as runs scored. They've scored two runs or less in 11 of the last 16 games. And in each of the last four games consecutively, two runs or less. Two balls and two strikes to Elvis. Off the glove. Uh, Wilson goes to Ibar, who throws out Elvis Andrews. A 1-6-3 put out at first, and it's a 1-2-3 inning. Rangers gone, and we finish four at Globe Life Park. The Angels leading the Rangers 8-1. Brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. And by Mazda. In every car we make, you'll see why driving matters. Now, Kobe Lewis back out to the hill, and it has been uh, a bit of a struggle for the 35 year old right hander. Eight runs on 11 hits tonight. The Angels have scored at least one run in each of the first four innings. And the first pitch of aim number five to Matt Joyce is in for strike one. Joyce one out of two. He singled and scored in the second. Last time up in the third line to center. One and one. And Colby trying to get as deep into the game as possible at this point. See if he can take a little of the, of the heat off the bullpen. He knows as a starting pitcher, that's uh, that's your job as much as anything else. You get behind early, and not only is it your job to put up zeros, but also to uh, take the pressure off the skipper about uh, having to go to the bullpen in the second or third inning. Ball's behind Joyce now. Three balls and a strike. Now 
Outside, ball four. The second walk issued by Colby tonight. One on nobody out. C.J. Crone coming up. A little uh, conference that I don't think either of those two gentlemen, Jeff Bannister or Mike Maddox, wants to have right about now. That's, uh, what do you think about going out to get Colby? Do you want to do it? Yeah. <laughs> How about you? No, I'm not going out there. <laughs> Just call him in from the dugout. <laughs> Hit well to right center field. That's slicing up the alley. It's going to go to the wall. Throwing another base hit around third. Here comes Joyce. He will score. C.J. Crone, an RBI double. He is three for three tonight. And the Angels lead it nine to one. And that is going to do it. Yeah, Bannister. I'm sure admiring the, uh, the fortitude of Colby to stay out there. But enough's enough. And uh, Colby just not able to shut down this angel offense in any of the five innings that he has worked. Well, that'll do it for Colby here tonight, and uh, Anthony Renato will be summoned from the right center field bullpen. Angels uh, leading 9-1. to one. We're going to take a timeout. We'll be back to Globe Live Park right after this on Fox Sports Southwest. Diamondbacks in interleague matchup. So head on out to Globe Live Park, have some summer fun out here, and enjoy the ballpark hot dogs, all you can eat for just a buck each. Visit TexasRangers.com for tickets, or you can call 972 Rangers if you prefer. The young man looks like he put down a couple of those ballpark hot dogs. Anthony Renato out of the uh, Ranger bullpen now, his third appearance of the year. Anthony just uh, called back up yesterday. And the Rangers uh, option Chichi Gonzalez back to Triple A. This is the first appearance that uh, Anthony has had coming out of the bullpen. His other two had been starts for the Rangers. Matter of fact, his first one back on the 15th of April was against these Angels. He did not fare well. Gave up six runs in an inning in two thirds. Not trying to get a little redemption here tonight. A little payback. He's dealing to uh, Chris Iannetta, who is 0 for 1, a walk and a strikeout. Two balls, no strikes. Now Colby Lewis, the first four innings plus two hitters here in the fifth. Nine hits, two walks, one strikeout. Nine runs on his ledger as of now and thrown out at second base his responsibility. And Anthony has fallen behind three balls and no strikes. Renato coming over from the Red Sox organization and trade the Said Robbie Ross Jr. to the Eastern Division. I should say the East Division. And ball four. The two on, nobody out. Top of the order now for the Angels. 
remember the last time we saw Anthony Renato was the middle of June. Uh, made a spot start out in Los Angeles uh, against the Dodgers. Worked six and two thirds shutout innings, giving up just five hits. And that was uh, as well as we had seen anybody pitch against the Dodgers at that point. They threw the ball well and you know, it was it was a spot start. It was kind of put him on a spot too. Slow chopper to short. They get the force at second. And that's all they'll get. Now runners at first and third with Crone stopping at third. Giovatella at first. Ionetta removed on the fielder's choice. That's a smart play by Elvis. You know, there's no really no way you're gonna turn it. Turn a double play here, but you get that uh, lead runner going into second, and you keep the double play in order. So, good choice by Elvis. So one out now. Cole Calhoun, one for three tonight, and an RBI single in the first. One ball, no strikes. Calhoun now with 43 runs driven in a 264 season batting average. He has five out of 12 in this series. And another changeup is high. Two balls, no strikes. Calhoun swinging the bat well away from Anaheim lately. He's been hitting over 300 in his last 14 road games. There's a strike. Two and one. Well, the Angels, we mentioned, started fast. They got their leadoff man aboard in the first and that started a three run uprising got their leadoff man aboard in the second scored twice same in the third scoring twice only time they have not had their leadoff man aboard and had him score in the same inning was the uh, fourth inning leadoff man then Mike Trout flied out and that was followed by Albert Pujols home run leadoff man here in the fifth Aboard via the walk, Matt Joyce came around to score on CJ Crone's double. Pop foul that will reach the seats over the uh, Angel dugout. Three and two the count. Calhoun getting back in the batter's box. Anthony Renato taking the sign with C.J. Crone at third. And over at first, Johnny Gio Botella. Botella on the move, and uh, that is fouled off to the left. And with one out, an eight-run lead in the fifth inning. Gio Botella off and moving with a pitch. I guess they feel like no lead is safe. Uh, we're kind of getting into that gray area right about now. Right, right about now. I think probably the sixth inning they shut it down if it's still an eight-run lead. Going again, and the pitch is hammered to center field. Going back, Delano to Shields at the track, at the wall. It's gone. Cole Calhoun on a 3-2 pitch drives the ball out of the ballpark. A three-run blast. And the Angels lead it 12 to 1. You know, it's just what we've been talking about the whole series. They've been hitting a lot of balls hard, and they've been hitting a number of balls soft. It doesn't matter. They're, they're finding holes, they're going over the fence, they're going off the wall, they're blooping in front of the outfielders. Ground balls are going through the infield. Fastball middle of the plate. Calhoun stays hot against the Rangers. That is 10 runs driven in in this series for Calhoun. Wow.
413 feet. That shot to center. Mike Trout rounding the shortstop. And Elvis takes care of that. Two gone. Now there's our AT&T U-verse Rewind. August 22nd, 2007. Rangers went absolutely nuts. First game of a doubleheader in Baltimore. 30 runs in that ball game. And like everybody that came up hit the ball either off the wall or out of the out of the park. Wow. That was a long night. Well, that was just the first game. Just the first game. <laughs> 30 to 3 the final in that game. I think at one point the Orioles were up either 3 to 1 or 3 to nothing. Yeah. Pools bangs one foul and the count is 0 and 2. Twelve runs or more in each of the last two games. Last time with back to back games like this last September. Chopper out in front of the home plate and Renato will throw off Pools. That'll do it, but Cole Calhoun strikes again. A three-run bomb. The Angels put four on the board in the fifth. Bottom of the fifth coming up. 12-1 Los Angeles. $7 upper reserve and upper box tickets. Plus, Papa John's is activating Rangers 7 special all day. Visit TexasRangers.com. Use the online coupon code 777 to get your tickets for the Diamondbacks and Rangers game on July 7th. And the first 15,000 fans, 14 and older, will also get a Rangers Hawaiian t-shirt, courtesy of Fox Sports Southwest. The Rangers coming to bat here in the bottom of the fifth inning, trailing 12 to 1. Ryan Rua, Adam Rosales, and Robinson Chirinos to face C.J. Wilson. Right. Pitch is high, one ball and one strike. Rua called out on strikes in the second inning. Ryan, a 189 batting average. And ball two is high. C.J. Wilson, 72 pitches under his belt with nobody out here in the fourth inning. The thing about C.J., it doesn't matter what the score is, he's not going to change how he goes about pitching to people. Chopper foul. Is that a good or a bad thing? Yeah. <laughs> in, this, in this case, I, I, don't, I don't think it's a very good thing, Mac. I mean, 
you know, I think you've got to adjust a little bit. And I'm not suggesting you got to go out there and throw fastballs right down the middle of everybody. Correct. But the important thing, as he gets Rua to look at a third strike, he's getting ahead of guys. He's, he's making it as quick as you can. You show guys when they're trying to catch up from an 11 run deficit that, hey, I'm going to go out there and throw a strike. You're going to get them to swing the bat. Right. That's when you have a chance to make things quick and, and make it easier. You go out there and fall behind 2 0 to everybody like you're in a 1 0 game. Guys kind of behind you kind of lose interest too, I would think. I would think they'd lose interest and be a little upset. Yeah. Adam Rosales taking ball one. Rosales, like Rua, called out on strikes his first time. He looks at a strike here. Adam, a 228 average. Gets fisted. That's going to fall in for a base hit. Able to cut it off Joyce and Rosales, a big turn, will hang on with a one out single. So Rosales with the second hit of the night for the Rangers. The board with one out and Robinson Torino's coming up. I got jammed a little bit. Thought about going for two, but when it's 12 to 1, you don't want to take any chances. Robinson Chirinos a pop out to short as he uh, led off the third inning here this evening. Strike one. Remember. Robinson Torino's back in April, the uh, April 14th game against these Angels, set a career high for himself with five RBI. Up the middle, that is in the center field of base hit. Rosales stops at second, so back to back singles, and that turns the lineup over for the top with the liner to Shields coming up. Pitch out over the middle of the plate. Just took it right back up the middle. No, Torinos and Rosales aboard. Deliner to Shields, who has walked and grounded a short. In his return to uh, Major League action, checks the pitch inside for ball one. The Shields, let me go back before the injury, before the hamstring problem, and a three game hitting streak. And he brings that into play here tonight. CJ Wilson, a long look in Dianetta. High bar, able to make the glove, but. A magic play by the shortstop to get the force on Chirinos at second. Wow, that's a great that's play. How good a play is that? Playing that's in at double play depth, be able to handle that. That's pretty good. See, when you're starting to go down like that, your head's moving. But Ivar was still able to keep his eyes on it. And get up and... Go right to second base. Nice play. Well, runners now at the corners and two outs. Rugnet Odor at the plate. And he takes strike one. Odor 0 for 2. He has grounded out twice. Reaching on a fielder's choice his last time. And pitch just inside. One and one to Rugnet. Odor, since coming back from uh, AAA Round Rock on the 15th of the month, he's the Rangers team leader in uh, almost every offensive category that doesn't involve home runs. The leader in hits, average, stolen bases, RBI. When you combine what he did when he went down to Triple A with what he's done since he came back, he's about a 360 hitter. Yeah. 
Well, he went down there and killed the ball, and he's been doing the same thing since he's come back. I think he finished up with it. Was an eight-game hitting streak? I believe was down there. Not sure. I think it was an eight-game streak that he uh, brought with him, and apparently it made the travel back because he was he's been doing about that same thing up here. Two balls, two strikes, two on, two out, and he popped it up. Botello, the second baseman there, and that will do it. Rangers get a couple of hits in the inning, but strand two. We finish five, 12 to one Angels. Mac, thanks for joining us. We'll see you after the ball game on Rangers Live. What? one place. Don't miss the 86th All-Star Game coming up on Tuesday, July 14th, only on Fox. Anthony Renato back out to the hill, and he will uh, work to Eric Ibar to start off the top of the sixth inning. Angels leading 12 to 1 here tonight. The Ibar, Freeze, and Joyce. First three hitters to face Anthony. And Ibar, first ball swinging, pops one up, shallow left, long run in for Rosales. <laughs> and he goes into a sit-down slide to make the catch. Well, he got a little bit of a late jump, but he came on strong. And the bottom line is he ended up catching it. <laughs> and speaking of the All-Star game, let's check in with Emily. Well, fellas, the starters have been announced for both the American and the National Leagues. They're used Take a look at the AL All-Stars. Not a clean sweep for the Kansas City Royals, but obviously very well represented in uh, the outfield as well as behind the plate. Uh, also, too, Mike Trout being named to his fourth straight All-Star game. Jose Altuve will be the starting second base. And the DH is Nelson Cruz. Josh Donaldson led all voting with just over 14 million votes. So he led the voting league-wide. The reserves will be announced tomorrow. Of course, the reserves selected by the players and the pitchers uh, by the coaching staff. So those announcements will come down tomorrow. Hopefully a Ranger or two will make their way to the reserve list, guys. All right, Emily, thank you. Going well, the other way, down the right field line, David Freeze pokes it out of play. And the count goes to uh, two and one. Yeah, you would think Prince Fielder certainly should uh, should be on that team, I would think, and uh, you know, you've got a chance to maybe have Giovanni Gallardo selected as one of the one of the pitchers. And Freeze again going to the right side. This one higher and shorter, and more foul. Back down to Emily. And we did talk to Prince today about, about the possibility of being uh, named 
as a reserve. He said it's not something, you know, he's focused on or was focused on coming into the season. His ultimate priority was just getting back with this team, playing good baseball, uh, getting back to where he was after sitting out most of last season. Uh, but he said just being in the conversation is obviously a good sign that he, uh, he's been able to achieve that so far this year. Yeah, you would think that would be, that in and of itself would be gratifying, just to be able to be in that conversation. Prince, I know, uh, as as most major league players do, takes an awful lot of pride in his ability to compete and uh, what he's been able to do on the field. And more so even coming back from that uh, the neck surgery that put everything in doubt for him. But he has come back to have one of the most consistent years I can remember by a, a power hitter. He's hit for average. He's hit for power. Adrian Beltre uh, behind him in the lineup has certainly made things more comfortable for, for Prince, but uh, well, what a job he has done. And Mitch Moreland getting the uh, opportunity to play first base with Prince going primarily to the DH slot. And I think that's helped him too, probably, as far as health goes. Three and two, the count to David Freeze. Eighth pitch of the at-bat coming from Anthony Renato. And it's popped up. Around the bag at second, moved in Odor. Out number two. And before Matt Joyce steps in, let's uh, send it over to Aaron Hardigan for a Mazda game break. All right, Aaron, thank you. Matt Joyce goes after that first pitch and slices the line drive to left. That's coming back to Adam Rosales. And there is the first one, two, three inning of the evening. Angels gone in order. We've finished five and a half. It's the Angels 12 and the Rangers 1 on Fox Sports Southwest. Slam inning brought to you by Sonic. Tonight's jackpot is worth $2,500 and dinner for two at Sonic Drive-In. If a Ranger hits a home run during this inning, Jerry Guest Sr. from Sherman will win $2,500. And if a Ranger hits a grand slam this inning, Jerry will win $25,000. You can register at any participating Sonic restaurant. Well, Prince has already slammed one out of the yard tonight. See if he can do it again against uh, C.J. Wilson. That uh, accounted for the only Ranger run back in the first inning. Prince with his 13th home run of the year. Other than that, Fielder is tapped right back to the mound. 
One ball and one strike. I'm not sure that's a real good idea. <laughs> that sliced out of play. Prince, uh, give him anything to get a little more pumped up about in a bat. Trailing 12 to 1. He just may take a full swing. And he did. 1 2. 90th pitch of the night by C.J. Wilson is low and outside. Wilson 53 strikes, 37 balls this evening. The 2 2 offering. So Prince trying to get aboard to start this sixth inning. Adrian Beltre is going to be next. Rangers are run on three hits. They're trailing by 11. Angels now scored 33 runs in this series. Payoff pitch. Off the end of the bat. Over to third base and freeze. Throws outfielder, one gone. Next will be Adrian Beltre. Adrian 0 for 1, drew a walk in the first, grounded a short as he got off the fourth inning. We talked yesterday about how well the Angels have been playing coming into the game. They'd won six out of seven. If they win today, it'll be seven out of eight. The Astros lost today. The Angels win this game. There'll be three games behind the Astros. They've, they've won a lot of games recently. They made up some ground in the standings. Cut the gap to three. Well, Mike Sosha's team uh, struggling early in the year to try and put a team together. And they just had a lot of question marks and they had to find out who was going to be serviceable in what areas and what positions. And uh, they knew that Albert Pujols was going to be Albert Pujols, Mike Trout, the same way. They weren't sure about second base. They weren't sure about a backup for pools necessarily. Outfield became a bit of a question mark. Calhoun was hurt a bit early in the year. And of course they didn't have Josh Hamilton who figured to be their everyday left fielder. So a lot of questions had to be answered. The strike to Adrian. And the pitching became a question mark. Didn't have uh, Garrett Richards to open the season. Matt Shoemaker got off to a a very slow start after having a great year last year. One two pitch is inside to even the count. And Jared Weaver had to be shut down for a while. He's on the disabled list. So it, it hasn't been a, a smooth sailing 2015 yet. But it looks like they might be putting things together. Beltre drives one to left. Going back is Joyce. It is over his head. A one half off the wall. Beltre cruising into second with a double. Boy, Adrian, that good pop in the bat. Well, he just reached out and kind of guided that out there over Joyce's head for the double. Well, you can still, he still favors the hand that's bothering him. Probably keeps him from following through the same way he has in the past. Not letting go of the bat, but kind of stopping his follow through after mm -hmm. he makes contact just a little bit. Ball still jumped off his bat, though. Now, Adrian, it's been eight, 19 games now since Adrian has had a home run. And Tom, is that is part of that due to the uh, hand problem? Probably. Yeah. Probably is. I think he's hit a couple of balls that have come close. That maybe would have gone if he was 100% healthy. Well, one thing we do know, it hadn't stopped him from getting back into the lineup. No. Nope. And Adrian at 75% or whatever percent he might be right now is good enough to be in the lineup. And he can play with the pain. He's proven that. Yep. But when you're getting four or five at bats every night, playing defense every night, and you've got that kind of an injury. It's hard for it to go away. You just have to hope that maybe over the All-Star break, the rest that he gets 
will allow it to be a lot better in the second half. Mitch Moreland shoots one just foul down the first baseline. Two and one. You know that, and that's part of we don't often talk about the uh, the issue of trying to play defense with a bad left hand, a bad left thumb. And you have to catch the ball, and uh, you know I remember you and I were talking about it you know, a couple weeks ago. Adrian was having trouble catching the ball, just playing playing catch with his son. And we don't think about that very often about uh, what a hand injury does there. We're thinking about hitting most of the time. To straightaway center field. Mitch gave it a good ride. Trout back on the wall. Leaps up. He can't get it. It's off the wall. Beltrick will trot around third and come in to score. Moreland with a booming double to center. For the RBI, it is 12 to 2. And uh, Trout is a little shaken up in center. Well, he went into that wall pretty hard. We've seen a lot of that this year. Outfielders just giving it up when they get near the wall. Any given night on the highlight tapes, you, you're liable to see Trout making that kind of a play. Jock Peterson for the Dodgers, you see him on a regular basis. Basically, if he can't get to it, it must have been a legitimate double. Couldn't quite get his glove on it, but he went face first into the wall trying. Yeah, that's a big man, and he's going to create a big collision out there. Well, he got up. He was able to to walk around, although not walking really in a straight line after that. It looked like he might have been a, a little shaken up. He's going to be all right. I'm so sure the trainers out there to take a look at him. So Mitch Moreland driving in a run, his 44th RBI of the year. He is now at second base, and Elvis Andrews will step in. Elvis has grounded out twice tonight. Once to first and once to short on a deflection off of C.J. Wilson's glove. Elvis trying to snap an 0 for 17 that he is in. Up the middle and it's into center field. A base hit. Morgan will round third and score without a throw. Elvis Andrews, the RBI single. It's a 12 to 3. Angel Lee. Elvis drives in his 28. Another solidly hit ball this inning. Right down the middle of the plate. Fastball or maybe a cut fastball. Elvis puts a good swing on it. Finds a hole up the middle, picks up an RBI. Nice little rally for the Rangers. Wilson has his pitch total up to 102 here in the sixth inning. Trevor got hard throwing right hander. Loosening in that angel bullpen. And Mike Butcher out to uh, have a little conference on the mound. And while we have a second here, we'd like to remind you that in honor of this uh, Fourth of July weekend, Fox Sports proudly supports Fields of Honor and its mission of providing educational scholarships to families of military members who have been killed or disabled while serving our country. For more information, visit foxsportsupports.com. Well, still just one out. A couple of runs across here in the sixth inning. Ryan Rua 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. Fouls off the first pitch. Yeah, Ryan's been called out on two similar pitches. One looked like it was several inches inside. Second one was fairly close to being the same kind of a pitch. C.J. Wilson has given up three consecutive hits here in the sixth inning. A pair of doubles followed by a single. A check of first. And Rua breaks his bat a ground ball to third. The second for one. The return in time. The around the horn double play. And that ends the Rangers six. They do score a couple of runs. Two runs on three hits. Nobody left. On to the seventh we go. 12 to three Los Angeles.
first inning, but the Angels had an answer for Prince. Albert Pujols, his 25th home run in the fourth inning. And the Angels kept climbing it on. A three-run blast by Cole Calhoun, capping off a great three-game series. Cole Calhoun with 10 runs driven in. And the uh, Angels leading 12-3 in the finale of this three-game set. Anthony Renato back to the hill, had a 1-2-3 inning in the sixth. He's retired five straight. He will face C.J. Crone, who is three for three today. Nothing and one. Crone now seven for 12 in this series. In this series... C.J. Crone, as we just mentioned, 7 for 12, 8 RBI, 3 runs, and in 18 career games against the Rangers, he's driven in 17. There's something wrong with that picture. Well, again, he's got 17 hits against the Rangers and 13 against every other team. He's 13 for 96 against the rest of the league. That's a 135 average. Out of play on the first base side. It's two and two. Crowe, who started at DH the first two ball games, at the start at first base, giving Albert Pujols a partial day off. Renato with a two-two pitch. Count goes full. Crowe, the number eight hitter. The uh, Angels lineup. Chris Iannetta in the on deck circle. Payoff pitch. It's going to be another hit as it gets down the left field line and throwing him with his fourth hit of the night. He is aboard with a leadoff single. Chris so three singles and a double tonight. Grown seven for eight last night and tonight. One on, nobody out. Ionetta, a couple of walks. He is 0 for 1 officially. And Renato hits the outside corner. Ionetta, the only angel to not have a base hit. He's just about the only angel not to score a run. Matter of fact, he is the only angel not to score a run this afternoon. No balls, two strikes. Now one and two. And note on C.J. Crone that four hits ties his career high. Set a career high with six RBI in a ball game last night. Both of them, both the four hit games have come against the Rangers. That's no surprise. <laughs> Not considering what you were talking about, Don. No. Hitting 8,000 against the Rangers and a buck 30 against everybody else. That's just a that's just a weird stat. Yeah. Left center field, long run over, but time to get there for Delano to Shields. One gone. You know, in the course of a season, you're going to have some teams that you hit very well against, and some teams that you don't. And there's probably a lot of different reasons how you match up against the different pitching staffs. The comfort you have facing the pitchers, how much you like hitting in the other ballpark, the background, the confidence that you have. And in Crone's case, it's probably a combination of those things, but he also has to feel very confident coming into the game. You've got a feeling that the way it's gone in the past just gives you a great feeling on it's going to keep on going that way. So he's got the confidence, not sure how he can look this good against <laughs> one team and that bad against everybody else. Yeah. It's not like he's hitting. 
400 against the Rangers and 260 against the rest of the league. It's 130. It's almost nothing. Giovatella gets fisted. Beltre across the diamond will throw out Giovatella on to second. So is Crone. He's there with two outs and Cole Calhoun coming up. Unless, unless uh, Crone is hitting line drive after line drive right at people on the other teams, I don't have an explanation for it. Yeah, I don't know either. Well, Cole Calhoun's hit some line drives this evening. He is two for four. He's homered and single, driven in four more runs. A couple uh, Calhoun's 10 RBI with Crone's 8 RBI in the series. And pretty good reason why the Rangers had a little trouble with the Angels in this three game set. Nothing in one. Calhoun was the third hitter that uh, Anthony Renato faced when he came in the fifth inning. Calhoun got the count full and Blasted one to dead center field. Chops that one foul. And Alfredo Griffin down there. Still with the good hands. Long time first base coach for the uh, Los Angeles Angels. 0 and 2 to Calhoun. Renato back to the plate. Sky to shallow left. Rosales coming on. And that will do it. No runs a hit. One man left. We'll take the stretch here in Arlington. 12-3. Angels leading the Rangers. And now we'll join Chuck Morgan as he introduces God Bless America. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please rise as we remember the servicemen and women who are serving our country at home and around the world. Performing God Bless America tonight, please welcome back the Bielefeld Brothers.
on over 400 mobile and connected devices with MLB.TV Premium. Real-time highlights, live look-ins, pitch tracking widget, and more every night on every device. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.TV for details. Now we go to the seventh inning. Rangers coming to bat, trailing 12 to 3. C.J. Wilson finished for the night. And the 22-year-old right-hander Trevor Gott is on now in relief. Pretty good start to his career, Buzz. Nine shutout frames to start his big league career. First angel to ever do that. Saw him uh, last night as he gets Adam Rosales to swing at the first pitch and pop it up. Foul territory for out number one. Last night, Moreland, Andrews, and Chu all went down in order against Trevor Gott. One out here, and before Robinson Torinos comes up, let's send it over to Aaron, Re Aaron Hardigan with a uh, Mazda game break. All right, Aaron, thank you. Quite a run for the uh, women's national team. Had... Robinson Chirinos, one for two tonight. Average at 206, had a single his last time up. That was in the fifth inning. Gott slings one in high and tight. Two balls, no strikes. Well, one thing we've seen from Gott is. Basically every fastball he throws is about 96 miles an hour, so he's got a great arm. You would think the angle that he throws from it, he might be a little nasty if he gets that thing down in the strike zone. Probably has some pretty good sink to it. And he's falling behind Torino's three balls and no strike. Oh, two and one. Excuse me. I was umpiring off the monitor and uh, I got the call wrong. Looked like a good call to me. Two hopper out to Ibar. Two gone. That's pretty good sinking action on that 95 mile an hour fastball. That's got a little bit of the Ed Edward Norton look to it. <laughs> Edward Norton when we're a big league pitcher, that's what he looked like. <laughs> I mentioned last night, God came over from the uh, Padres organization along with uh, Houston Street. Is that uh, trade deadline or close to trade deadline at the trade deadline last year about this time. The liner to Shields reached on a walk in the third. Other than that he has grounded out twice tonight. One ball and one strike. I know with the average at 265 currently. And he shoots one the other way. That off speed pitch hung up very nicely for him. It's like, kind of like putting it on a tee up there for you. Deserve to get a hit after that one hop smash that I bought took away from him last time. Yeah. So a good return for Delino. Got himself a base hit. He also had a walk. He had the one hop smash. Look like it might be a base hit to left field. And he's made some solid contact. Worked the count. Got a walk. Exactly what you're looking for. Been up four times. Been on base twice. And Odor pounds one to right center field and deep. Way back. Goodbye. Ruben at Odor with his fourth home run of the year. Have cut the lead to seven. It is 12 to five. Well, there goes the scoreless streak. In his big leagues start to his big league career. God has finally given up some runs. No doubt about those runs. No, that uh, that was gone the moment he hit it. 
and it's solid contact. 1 0 pitch to Prince Field. That's the line to center field, a base hit. We can hand some clothes on that one. Another multi hit game for Fielder. That is the 36th multiple hit game for Fielder this year. Oh, he had the home run against Wilson in the first inning. And then a bullet <laughs> over shortstop. Pitches on the outside corner of the plate, but it's belt high. Probably was right in his wheelhouse. He launched that thing into the bullpen. And over the bullpen. Rubnet stays hot since he's come back. Actually, since he went down because he got hot at AAA when he went back down. Yeah. Hadn't played at AAA before, though. He had just a brief amount of time in AA before he was called up to the big leagues last year. A 36 multiple hit games for Fielder. That far and away leads all of Major League Baseball. He's five better than the next closest pursuer. That's Jason Kipnis. Adrian Beltre, a double and a run scored. One out of two tonight. Also had a walk. Up the middle. And off the double, Gio into center field. Everybody's safe, and the inning continues. Gibdella kind of played that into a tough hop. Way he went over, he's going to try to catch it. Kind of backhanded off to the side. Takes a little hop on him, kicks off the side of his glove. Wasn't able to accomplish that. We're waiting to hear whether that's going to be a, a base hit. It's going to be an error on Gio Botella. Well, the inning continues on the error. And now Mitch Moreland, who had an RBI double his last time, takes low and inside for ball one. Moreland's RBI is 44th of the year. Mike Sosha. Looking out toward the bullpen, but uh, in between his viewpoint and the bullpen, the Rangers have two runners on. There's a strike to even things up to Mitch. Well, the one area where the Angels have been consistently struggling this year has been in the bullpen, They're trying to find a bridge from the middle of the ball game to Houston Street. This one's playable for Matt Joyce. And that will do it. Rangers, though, made some noise. They get a couple of runs on three hits, an error, and strand two. We're going to the eighth inning. It's now the Angels 12 with the Rangers 5.
game. You got to give it to Killian and, and Shane. They came all the way in from Ireland. Ranger fans here. What Rangers! do you think so far? Your very first game. Very first game. I've been an expert on baseball since about five o'clock this evening. I haven't a clue what's going on, but I'll tell you what's happened. Okay, the Rangers they they were, they had a bad start. They had a bad start. Let's not fool ourselves. But they're bringing it back. They are in the process of bringing it back. And if you look at that scorecard, you can see the Angels. Well. They've kind of hit a wall, do you know what I'm saying? Shane, Shane, what's, what's Fielder going to do? What is Fielder going to do, Shane? My boyfriend's Fielder is going to knock it out of here a few times. A couple times. And there we make go. the all-star team. Yeah, there we go. Right. All right, well, congratulations. There's the bag. Anything else <laughs> you'd right. like to say yeah. for a comeback? Here? Oh, yeah, 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 right. Well, i just like to say that I'm leaving my, uh, my lucky tip jersey in Texas, and it's going to be like the Rangers' lucky charm. 12 win streak, and and here's as a promise. If the Rangers succeed in pulling this back, myself and Shane are buying every person here a good frosty fucking bite of Guinness. I'm sorry. There we go. Good frosty. Get a pan shot. Get a pan shot. There we go. All right. Good day, mate. Good day, mate. Thank you very much. (laughs) Go Rangers! Go Rangers! That might be a new one. He got overmatched. Goodness. That's, uh, sorry about the, uh, the language, folks. It's part of the charm of doing live TV sometimes gets lost. Well, I applaud his enthusiasm. Yeah. And Mike Trout, a swing and a miss. He is gone on strikes. Well, Anthony Renato records his first punch out of the night. One away. And Albert Pujols coming up. Pools, two for four tonight, a single and a home run. He has driven in a couple now with 53 RBI this year. One ball, no strikes. Pools' home run, a solo shot in the fourth inning, is 25th of the year. That leads the American League. A ball and a strike. Albert climbing up that all-time home run list. The bomb that he hit tonight, number 545. He is now three home runs shy of uh, tying Mike Schmidt. Schmidt, he holds the 15th place all-time in home runs. Renato's 1-1 pitch. You look at the guys that Pool holes has passed just this year. Some pretty impressive names on uh, on that list for him. Takes that pitch low and outside. Three and one. And a strike. Come on back, Albert. Back at home plate. That thing's all the way in the strike zone. Who else this year has passed Ted Williams, Jimmy Fox, William McCovey, and Frank Thomas on the all-time list? That's pretty good year's work. Lines in center field. That's hanging up there for a dominant the shields. Out number two. Well, Pujols making that U-turn at first, headed back to the Angel dugout. Eric Ibar now will step in. Ibar, a double in three official trips. Had a uh, sacrifice fly back in the first inning, driving in his 27th run of the year. He doubled leading off the third and came around to score. Average at 281. Bar now nine hits in this series. Nine out of 14. He's hit in 11 of his last 14 games, also at a 440 clip. A ball and a strike.
Renato into the wind. The right-hander deals. Just outside. Breeze continuing to come in from uh, right field toward home plate. Ibar lost a fly ball to right. Ryan Roa underneath it makes the catch. That'll do it. Another one, two, three inning. That's six straight now. Set down by Anthony Renato. Bottom of the eighth coming up. Rangers coming to bat trailing 12 to 5. The eighth here at Globe Life Park in Arlington, trailing by a score of 12 to 5 in the finale of this three game set against the Angels. It is a day off tomorrow, followed by a series, early series, against the Arizona Diamondbacks. Paul Goldschmidt and his NL leading 349 average will take on Giovanni Gallardo, who's riding a pretty nice streak of his own 29 and a third consecutive scoreless innings. He will look to continue that on Tuesday when the D-backs and the Rangers face off. 7 o'clock first pitch here on Fox Sports Southwest. Thanks to AT&T U-verse for bringing us all the good stuff, guys. All right, Emily, thank you. you know, Elvis Andrews will lead off here in the Ranger eighth inning. And uh, a new pitcher on the hill for the uh, Los Angeles Angels. That'll be the side-wheeling Joe Smith. Smith, uh, oft-used reliever out of the uh, pen for Mike Sosha. This is his 37th appearance. Two and two the record. As he deals outside. Defensive changes. Uh, Taylor Featherston is uh, coming to the ball game to take over at third base. And out in uh, left field, Daniel Robertson. He had the start out there last night. He is in defensively here in the eighth. Elvis takes a strike and it's one and two now. Elvis an RBI single snapping an 0 for 17 his last time up. Elvis uh, along with a single a couple of uh, ground outs and he takes high. Gotta run the count full, so Elvis trying to get aboard to start off this Ranger eight. Look down in the on deck circle. Leonis Martin has grabbed a bat. He is out there getting ready to hit for Ryan Rua. Right center field, Trout retreating, makes the catch for out number one. No one away, and here comes Leonis for a pinch hitting assignment. Folks, right now it's time for you to tweet your strongest fan photo. Use hashtag Southwest Data, strong fan, and you might just see yourself on an upcoming broadcast. Brought to you by the good folks at T-Mobile.
Leonis Montin off the uh, Ranger bench as a pinch hitter. Jerry Smith drops a breaking ball in at the knees for strike one. Leonis a 224 average, five home runs and 24 driven in. Tried the back door of that hook and missed one ball, one strike. Leonis had a pinch hit home run back on the 19th of May against the Boston Red Sox. That was the first by a Ranger since Michael Choice had a pinch hit blast last year. Back in April of 2014 for Michael Choice. One ball, two strikes. Got him swinging. Nope, foul tip. Leonis just able to stay alive with that foul tip. Martin in his career against Joe Smith, 0 for 6. Right-hander is ready. Drive down the right field line, but that's hooking and going foul way back oh, in the second deck. <laughs> he got all of that one. You don't see many balls end up up there. You know, you, you don't see many in that section. I definitely don't remember one that high in that section. Yeah. Well, Leonis try to put a little less bend in it. He lines one to center field. That is down and going to the wall. Trout will play the carom. Martin scooting into second with a rifle shot double. Some pretty good contact in back-to-back -back swings. Launched one 400 feet down the right field line foul and then smoked one in the left center field on a line. Good at bat right there for Leonis. Fastball out over the plate. Stayed with it. Went the other way with it. That's what he needs to do to be a productive big league hitter. Take that outside pitch the other way. Don't try to pull it. Well, Martin, the uh, pinch hit double. Now Shinsu Chu coming off the bench to pinch hit for Adam Rosales. Smith with the uh, sinking fastball in for strike one. Chu is one for four against Joe Smith. They used to be teammates in Cleveland. 0 1. One ball and one strike. Joe Smith's second year with the uh, Angels. Spent his first five years in Cleveland with the Tribe. And Chu. It's a high fly ball to right, not very deep. Calhoun with a catch, and uh, Leonis will stay at second. That's out number two, and it brings up Robinson Chirinos. Yes, Chu skies out. Chirinos steps to the plate, one for three tonight. Robinson, a fifth inning single. Other than that, he has popped to short and grounded to short. Rangers, as Emily, Emily was talking about, uh, an off day tomorrow. And they will host the Arizona Diamondbacks coming in uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. Another left-hander on the hill to face the Rangers on Tuesday. It'd be Robbie Ray. The record of uh, two and four for Arizona. Giovanni Gallardo gets the start, taking his uh, 29 in the third inning scoreless streak out of the hill. Then on Wednesday, Matt Harrison, his first start since uh, last May at the Major League level. Jeremy Hellickson will start for the Diamondbacks. We just noted, noticed the game on the scoreboard. Colorado beat Arizona, I think it is, 6-4. to four. De La Rosa beat De La Rosa. Yeah. Yeah, it was the Battle of the Roses. <laughs> and Ruby and, uh, and 
Jorge, I think it is. I'm not sure. Oh, and two the count. Torino's waiting, and Joe Smith sets. Call strike three. A knee buckling breaking ball, and Robinson frozen at home plate. No runs a hit, and one man left. We'll go to the ninth inning here at Gold Live Park. 12 to 5, Angels on top of the Rangers. Live is it too little too late we shall find out angels with a 12-5 lead heading into the ninth here at the park Aaron Harding and welcome you into the captain Morgan Club believe it or not in tonight's outing there are some highlights or rather positives we can take away from this one we'll explain it coming up on Rangers live the post game show we'll also tell you why Prince Fielder should be in this year's all-star game we'll hear from Jeff Bannister as well as bring you highlights of that USA sweet revenge victory over Japan in tonight's World Cup final win 5-2 was the final highlights of that all coming up on Rangers Rangers Live, the postgame show immediately following action here as we get things back across the way to Buzz and Tom. All right, Aaron, thank you. Now Tanner Shepherds has come out of the Ranger bullpen. He will take over here in the ninth inning. He is uh, dealing to Daniel Robertson. Tanner appearing in his 26th ball game, 3-0 with a 438 ERA. He has uh, been dropping lately. He has really thrown the ball well. Last several times out of the Ranger bullpen, getting himself back to uh, what folks remember of him a couple of years ago. Delano to Shields moving from center field to left field in the new outfield alignment for the Rangers. Shinsu Chu is in right with uh, Leonis Martin staying in the ballgame to take over in center. Shepherds to the wind, the 0-2 pitch. Ran it upstairs. And couldn't get uh, Robertson to offer it. The last six times out to the mound for Tanner Shepherds. He has not allowed a run. He has allowed a grand total of one hit in uh, six and a third innings. He's also struck out seven. In those six and a third. So getting back to the uh, dominant late inning reliever that uh, we recall from a couple of years back. 2 2 pitch. Up the middle into center field, a base hit. Robertson with a leadoff single here in the ninth inning. Next will be Taylor Featherston. Angels now with 15 hits tonight. Featherson is first at bat. 
And he takes strike one. Featherston hitting just 125. Ranger infield a step around to the left. They are in a step at double play depth. Ouch. Inside fastball right on the thumbs of uh, Taylor Featherston. He fouled it back. Now we've seen Tanner Sheppers be able to run that fastball in on the best of hitters. It's that late movement at uh, mid 90s to upper 90s. Pulled the string a little bit on the breaking ball, and it's still a ball and two strikes. Another one two pitch. Just left it a little high and inside. Shepers, a letter high set. Featherston just getting a piece of it to stay at two and two. Tanner already uh, 11 pitches and has yet to record an out. Gave up the leadoff single to Daniel Robertson. Now another 2 2 pitch coming to Featherston. This one's popped up. Odor ranging out in a very shallow right field to handle it for out number one. Now C.J. Crone again. And we'll see if Tanner Shepherds can't find a way to get Crone out. Yeah, see if Crone won't be won't become the second angel to get five hits in this series in a game. Ibar had five hits the other night. Crone's four for four tonight. Grown with uh, a double and three singles. And he takes a breaking ball for strike one. He has scored twice. He has driven in a run. And he's played first base. So it's been a, a fairly busy evening for CJ Grown. Nothing in two. Tanner Shepard's a 28-year-old out of Mission Viejo, California. Back to the plate. Tried the breaking ball again and couldn't get the swing. Tim Wilkie says, nope, that's not enough for a swing. So it's one and two. Right-hander sets again. And this one popped up. Elvis backpedaling into center field. Two gone. Oh, our THU Energy Power Player of the Game, C.J. Crone tonight. Tanner Shepard finally got him out, but Crone had a great night. A four-hit game, another four-hit game. Second of his career, both of them coming against the Rangers. And big double in the fifth inning. Driving in a run. He had a solid single in his last time at bat before finally popping out. He is four for five. Our TXU Energy Power Player of the Game tonight, CJ Crone. Chris Ionetta has walked twice tonight. He is uh, 0 for 2 officially. The only angel that uh, does not have a base hit, the only angel starter. Taylor Featherston doesn't have a hit, and he came in to uh, 
take over defensively for David Freeze. Check swing and uh, he did not go around. Two balls and a strike. Yeah, we got clarification, Tom, on that uh, War of the Roses. Yeah. In uh, it was Jorge De La Rosa okay. got the uh, win for Colorado, and Ruby De La Rosa took the loss for Arizona. Okay. Thanks for clarifying. Sure. That. Well, I knew you were trying to mull that over and come up yeah. with a solution. I, you know, I was going to look it up when I got home. Okay. Three and one to Ionetta. And ball four. That's his third walk of the night. Now first and second, and uh, Johnny Giobotella will come up for his fifth plate, or sixth plate appearance. Giobotella is two for four. That a sacrifice fly, make that two for five. Sacrifice fly. And Tanner getting an inning of work with an off day tomorrow, kind of trying to stay sharp. But the one thing you don't want to see is 28 or 30 pitches in the inning. Have to have a nice quick inning. Oh, and one to Giovatella. A couple of RBI tonight for the Angels second baseman. Now has 31 for the year. Got Robertson at second. Ionetta at first. One ball and one strike. Dan, you remember, spent a little time down at uh, Round Rock. Got off to a, a tough start in his first five outings. Had an ERA of 11.25 and spent about a month at AAA sharpening things up. Right center field, Leonis Martin coming on, and he's got it. Since he has returned, Tanner Shepherds. Much, much better. No runs a hit, two left. Bottom of the ninth coming up, 12-5, Los Angeles. Sports Southwest is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. By AT&T, Uverse TV. Uverse has more live TV channels on the go than cable. And by your Texas Ford dealers. Visit your Texas Ford dealer now for great deals on America's best-selling brand. Ford is the best in Texas. 
bottom of the ninth. Hines, the Rangers coming to bat, and they will be facing the closer in to get uh, some work for the Los Angeles Angels. Houston Street, his 34th appearance of the year, 23 saves. That's uh, tied for second in the American League. ERA of 214, and opposition hitting just 175 against him. And a change defensively as Efren Navarro has entered the ballgame to take over at first for the Angels. It'll be the top of the Ranger order, Delino to Shields to start things off against Street. Street, the 31-year-old out of Austin, Texas. A Longhorn alumni, and he fires strike one. Delino singled his last time up, scored a run. One for three officially tonight. And been on base twice, uh, a single and a walk. It's this one to left center field. That's hit pretty well up the alley. That is down and it's trouble. The Shields not stopping at second. He is motoring on into third. He's in standing with a three back. Oh, welcome back to Lino. Talked about the nice game he had after his base hit in the seventh inning. Made it a real nice game back. And the other thing is, here he is three hours into the ball game, playing center field, running him down, running the bases. And he gets a triple, which seems to indicate his leg is feeling pretty good right now. I was going to say, if there's any question about his hamstring, I think that pretty well answers it. Yeah, he gets a good pitch to hit and drills it. Two hits and a walk tonight. That's what the Rangers have been missing since he's been on the disabled list. Getting the job done in that leadoff spot. The Shields' fifth triple. And now Rubin Odor cuts through a street fastball. Yeah, he turns other people's doubles into routine triples. Been missing seeing him run for the last three weeks or so. <laughs> Rubin Odor, one for four. That won a two-run home run in his last time up. Rubin now with four home runs, 21 RBI. That average at 235. He's sneaking up on uh, adding 100 points to his batting average since he came back to the big leagues in the middle of June. That is some heavy lifting offensively to get that much uh, on your average in that short a time. Foul back. It's a ball and two strikes. Houston Street came over to the Angels. That big trade with the uh, Padres last year. July 18th was the date of that trade. Right-hander comes in with a fastball that's high, 2-2. Two and two. Street primarily a fastball slider pitcher that has a very good changeup. Doesn't throw maybe quite as hard as he used to, but still enough with the uh, command of the other two pitches, the off-speed pitches. He gives folks fits. In the dirt, slider down, and Rugnet took it for ball three. The count is full. Odor hitting the number two slot. He will be followed by Prince Fielder. Liner to Shields at third. The payoff pitch to Odor. We'll try it again. Houston Street last year after coming over to the Angels. Had 17 saves in 28 appearances. Couple that with the 24 that he had for the Padres prior to the trade. 41 saves last year. The most that he has posted in any single season. Another 3-2 coming. Sky to left field. Robertson getting himself set to throw. DeShields tagging. Here comes the throw. Here comes the line when he is in safety. A sacrifice fly by Rugnet Odor. DeShields streaking down the line to score. And it's a 12-6 Angels lead. 
Yeah, he might have had a chance to get a normal runner. He played it pretty well. He's coming in on the dead run, which got his momentum behind the throw, made a fairly strong throw. You just don't have much chance to get someone who can run like the line, though. Get an idea of what we're talking about here. Good, pretty good throw by Danny. He got rid of it in a hurry, but even if that throw is right on the on the plate, he doesn't get the uh, Delino. Uh -huh. So the lead cut to a half dozen. And here's Prince. Already a multi-hit game tonight. Fielder two for four, a home run and a single. Average at 348. One ball and one strike. Fielder against Houston Street, just 0 for 2. He's also drawn three walks against the closer. And he skies one to relatively shallow right field. Long run in for Cole Calhoun, but he's there in plenty of time. That is out number two. It's one of those ones that if you go back to the bench and think about that one for a few minutes where it would have gone if you got a hold of it. Got a good pitch to hit, good swing at it, hit it on the right part of the bat. Just got underneath it a little bit. Nevertheless, a strong day for Prince with a home run and a bullet back through the middle for a base hit. Yeah, it seems like two for five is just about what we expect out of him. Pretty much. <laughs> That's what he's given us. Here's Adrian. And Beltre fouls off that first pitch. That one had some hang time too. The one, the one that Trout hit to center field, Kelly Donaldson figured had seven and a half seconds of hang time. Wow. I don't think we've placed our unofficial record is somewhere between seven and a half and eight. I don't think anyone's had more than eight. If it's up there seven and a half seconds, it's pretty high. Well, one and one to Adrian. Beltre has a double uh, and a walk. One out of three tonight. He's also scored a run. Rangers have six runs on 11 hits. Oh, nice to see the offense bust loose a little bit here tonight. That's low and outside. Two and one. Somebody's going to ask Jeff Bannister, did you waste it tonight? And he's going to say, no, we did not waste it. It was just nice to see because this club can do that on any given night. Up the middle. Street. Quick as a cat. Picks it off. And that is it. Well, that was a bullet off the bat of Beltre. Rangers score a run in the ninth inning, but come up short. Angels win the game tonight. End up sweeping the three-game series against the Rangers. 12-6, to six, the final here this evening. As the Angels complete the three-game sweep. And do it in a pretty handy fashion. We'll come back to Globe Life to wrap things up right after this on Fox Sports Southwest. 